everyone, I've done week one of the Christmas Spirit Readathon. I'm about a third of the way through of all the books that I listed down to read. And come to realise I'm not actually going to get them all read because I've got so much going on this week, it's just not going to happen. But I just wanted to do a short little wrap up of what I've managed to read and what I thought about it. So starting up with the children's books, um, Stick Man by Julia Donaldson. This is a lovely children's picture book about the adventures of the stick man as he gets taken away from his home and his stick family and his adventures about trying to get back home again. It's really sweet and it's beautifully illustrated as all Julia Donaldson books are and I really enjoyed it. And then I did Richard Scary's The Night Before The Night Before Christmas. Um, this is basically a fun little look at Mr Frumble who is quite accident prone in this uh, collection of books and his attempts to go and help Father Christmas. Unfortunately through a series of accidents Father Christmas ends up leaving on the night before the night before Christmas and it's up to Mr Fumble to go and sort things out. Then there's The Snowman by Raymond Briggs. This is the original release of the story where there are no words. It is just beautifully illustrated pictures. And uh, yeah, this one makes you cry at the end. There may be absolutely no words, but just through the power of the illustrations, I was crying. It, it's one of those stories that just hits you. Um, if you only know the snowman from the Channel 4 animated film that was done, this uh, has none of the adventure at the North Pole meeting Father Christmas. That doesn't happen in the original story. That was an embellishment for the film, uh, which works really well. But this is the original story of the boy and the snowman, and it's really beautiful. So three classic children's stories, two of which have a very strong link to Christmas, and one has a ending that links to Christmas. And they're all really good, um, they're all great for a quick five minute read, or read aloud to a member of your family. Next up I listened to the BBC Radio production of The Blue Carbuncle. This is from The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Conan Doyle. Holmes is played by Clive Merrison and Watson by Michael Williams. And if you have not heard any of the radio series, please go and check them out because in my mind Clive Merrison and Michael Williams are way up there with the great Holmeses of Brett and Rathbone. Um, I grew up listening to Merrison and Williams, so for me, for a very long time, they were Holmes and Watson, and nobody else came close to them. Um, what I like about The Blue Carbuncle is it's dramatised um, really well, so you actually get the story of what's going on, rather than what's very traditional in, in the, the written stories, where a person comes in and tells them what's happened, and Watson records it all down. I like the dramatised versions because you get what's happened through the dramatisation and then it comes to Holmes who's filled in. Um, the Blue Carbuncle is one of my favourites out of the adventures of Sherlock Holmes. I think it's been really well dramatised. It also shows Holmes his apathy towards the season and the fact he's just like, ugh. Yeah, whatever. Um, so I think that's really nice. And there's some really touching moments between Holmes and Watson um, in this episode, as there are throughout many of the stories, that show that the deep affection that these guys have for each other, that they are huge companions of each other. You know, not in a romance sense of the word, in the very Victorian sense of these guys look out for each other. Um, and care deeply about each other without it being anything sexual, romantic, you know, none of that bromancy stuff, none of that Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson shipping stuff, no, there's none of that. This is exactly what Victorian companionship was all about, two people who were happy in each other's company and respected each other greatly. And what these audios do is show that level of friendship very beautifully, uh, in very small subtle ways, and I think they're really well done, worth checking out. And I went for a bit of a classic Christmassy, this is A Merry Little Christmas by Debbie McComer. Um, it's two short stories in here, one is 1225 Christmas Tree Lane, and the other one is 5B Poppy Lane. They tell two stories that kind of revolve around the Christmas season, um, and they're... Considering I've not read anything specifically Christmassy written, they were really well done actually. I enjoyed the first one quite immensely. I liked the way 
it read as though I was coming into a special episode at Christmas of a like a soap or something. So there were lots of snippets of people's lives from around the village and you were briefly filled in about what had gone on in their lives and how Christmas what it meant to them. So I really like that aspect. Um, I like kind of being thrown into the deep end and not really knowing everybody properly, but getting a, a brief glimpse of their lives. So that was really good. And uh, 5B Poppy Lane is a very um, sweet story uh, about family secrets and loss and love and, and learning to live again. And it's it's really touching, actually. It's a, a very good story. And then finally, yesterday I read I Am Scrooge, A Zombie Story for Christmas. This is by Adam Roberts. Um, this is the same guy who did the spoof Hobbit and Lord of the Rings books. And um, those of you that picked it up and thought, oh, this is going to be A Christmas Carol with Zombies, you'd be a little bit mistaken by that. It's, it takes the trappings of A Christmas Carol and inserts a probable zombie plague in there and then Scrooge becomes our almost hero of the story and um, I really enjoyed it there are lots of nods towards the reader that, that the the writer is very much aware that the story is being read and being told there are some pop culture references in here there's um particularly very early on there's a shining reference there are music references as well in here, which was very amusing. A particular song by the Cranberries comes into very good effect about halfway through the story. And actually the twist towards the end, which I don't want to spoil, but if you start thinking about it, it's really clever and slightly creepy. Um, so I really enjoyed it. It's not for everyone's um, taste and certainly if you're looking for a more classic zombie style retelling of a classic story, this is probably not the book for you. But if you want something a bit fun, light-hearted with maybe a few thought-provoking punches thrown in for a good measure, then you'll probably enjoy this one. So that's what I've managed to get through this week. Um, I have until Sunday to try and get through the rest of my books. I have started one already, so wish me luck. And I'll fill you in next week about how well I did overall on the Christmas Spirit Readathon. As always, my social media links are down below in the description box. I will be leaving booktube uh, channels that I think you might want to check out. Please go and have a look at the links down there. Um, they will be people that talk about things that I don't talk about. Um, and you might be interested in them. As always, thank you very much for watching and happy reading. Bye!